Hey everyone, welcome to Women Seeking Wholeness, episode 155. I'm Cherie Burton, and this is a podcast for women and men who long to feel, express, and be who they truly are. Today is a little bit of a controversial topic. I might catch a little heat on this, I'm not sure, but I don't really care. (laughs) How do you know if your marriage has fulfilled its purpose? In other words, how do you know if your marriage is over or if it's in the process of wrapping up and ending? I mean, after all, we are in a time on the earth where a lot of things are transitioning and a lot of people are recognizing when they're in an unhealthy dynamic. So today we're going to take that on. And I got pretty real with Olga Nadal today. She's my guest. She created Divorce for Love after being able to end her 15-year marriage in an amicable and respectful manner. She is the creator of the Holistic Divorce Institute and also the author of The Holistic Divorce, A Practical 10-Step Process for Healing. Now, just because we are talking about divorce does not necessarily mean we're completely advocating for it in all circumstances. I just wanted to give that little disclaimer because honestly, women and men have been kind of buying into to this belief that they have to stay in a really painful, even abusive or toxic marriage because it's the quote unquote right thing to do. And I love the way she lays out in this episode, how to determine if it's time to move forward and move on, not just for the good of the relationship, but for the good of the family and the good of the individual. So I think you'll really enjoy this episode. If you're kind of trying to ascertain whether or not you need to make plans to actively separate or divorce. And even if you're not in that place and you have a great marriage, this is a really good episode to listen to. Olga, here you are in Hawaii in the beautiful sun. And here I am in Utah in the beautiful cold, but welcome. (laughs) Complete opposite. (laughs) Thank you for having me, Cherie. I was really, really intrigued by the term holistic divorce. And my listeners know this. I almost divorced. Jeff and I were married almost 25 years. We separated. Um, It was extremely traumatic, but it was extremely empowering when we separated. Now I want, and and we're going to talk about that. Um, That's where we're going to start actually, but I just, just to give the listeners who are maybe newer to my show, uh, the little synopsis of how my almost divorce uh, took place is yeah i mean we we had some unresolved um issues within ourselves that we had not addressed kind of hit an apex maybe when we you could call it a midlife crisis you could call it a lot of things we had a, a faith crisis as well in our religion of origin and we were just trying to figure ourselves out and uh ultimately i was the one saying go and I'm really blessed. And I think this is a key piece of this too, is that I already, I was already independently financially free. I, my business was, and I, and I recognize that not a lot of women, um, especially when I went to go see my attorney who was amazing. Her name is Jill Coyle and she has her own podcast and she's amazing. On, she's on Instagram, but um, she, she told me this was rare for a woman to be able to have her own resources like that. So I'm very sensitive to that. Not a lot of women feel that they have the freedom to um, make a choice like that because they don't have the discretionary means or the material resources to be able to do that. So we're going to, I want to explore that with you. But anyway, in a nutshell, we did separate. We were separated almost 10 months. We got back together right before COVID hit. So it was, um, you know, we, when we were quarantining together, we were really back in healing things, but we were a hair's breadth. I am not kidding you. We had lawyered up. Um, we were ready to sign those papers. Um, they were in our hands and we chose to, by a series of events that t- will take too long to explain here, we both just kind of woke up and decided we really loved each other and we wanted to be together. We weren't just doing it for our children or because it was the right thing to do, quote unquote. We did it because we wanted to be together and make it work because we loved each other. So that is a very short explanation to a lot of tears and drama and pain. And But where I would love for us to start, Olga, is talking about How do you know if you are in an unhealthy marriage? 
I think this is a good place to start because self-identifying and becoming aware of this makes all the difference in every other decision that you make moving forward about whether to stay or go or split or separate or divorce, whatever. Like you have to have a reckoning at some point, no matter how much you love each other. Are you in an unhealthy marriage or are you, every marriage is an unhealthy, so don't get, but are you in the kind of marriage that, let's just say that, are you in the kind of marriage? How do you know if you're in the kind of marriage where you need to separate? You're like laughing at me because I'm going in all these directions. <laughs> well, no, I'm laughing because you just started how I wanted to answer the question, which was like, I will answer. How do you know if you're in an unhealthy marriage? But to me, a very important question wouldn't necessarily be, am I in an unhealthy marriage? But am I in a marriage that has been completed? Because there are plenty of people okay. that come to me that their marriages are not toxic. They're not abusive. They're perfectly fine. They could really continue but they want something yeah. else. And it's what I call the fulfilled marriage syndrome. When you feel like you want to go from good enough, okay, to greatness. So that's mm -hmm. one thing that I want to make sure that people understand. You don't have to sit in a painful marriage in order to want out of it. I think that that is a belief that many people hold that you have to suffer to stay together. Absolutely. And it is so incredibly archaic and medieval and ridiculous. And I, I admire people who feel like that they that they're um, how do I say this? There's a martyr complex that can come into play that the more that I suffer and stay in this thing because it's the spiritually right thing to do or it's the whatever right means to them, that they will stay in it and suffer because it would be wrong <laughs> in God's eyes or other people's eyes to split that union. But in my right. mind, I was suffering to such a degree with my own unhealed pieces of me and my own unmet needs mm -hmm. that I was like, how could this be of God? I'm miserable. And the most damaging repercussion of that wrong belief of, well, we can't leave a marriage unless it's horrible, is that we will either consciously or subconsciously bring so much pain to our lives and to our marriage so we can justify the exit. And this is where, to me, it's one of the reasons why we have such painful ending to our marriages, because we do not accept that we can end in good terms. It has to be like, we have to hate oh, each other. Somebody so has true. had this, something horrible. We need to justify it. And I tell, I tell my clients when they come to me with that approach of he or she is not that bad, you know, we don't really need this. I say, okay, but are you gonna be a fulfilled human staying in this? Because if you are not, trust me, your body, your mind are going to work in very subconscious ways to undermine this. And then six months later, you will call me saying, Olga, you won't believe what happened. It got really bad. And yeah. it's happened to so many of my clients. They, they try to, and, and, and I also want to make a, a remark here. I am not saying that the minute that you feel discomfort in your marriage or slight unhappiness, you call me up and say, I, I think that we're done. Right, I heard right, you right, saying right, that, right, yeah, no, that I deserve more. No. And that will be my first stop in this Divorce journey or questioning your marriage journey will be do the inner work. Before people work with me, I always ask them, have you worked in your own, you know, whatever we want to call it, your own stuff, you know, yeah. do you make sure that this is not about your partner and your relationship, that this is not something that you're carrying within yourself that is mm -hmm. going to be carried over to your next relationship. So for people who are questioning, is my marriage over? First off, Go on, either do it yourself if you have the means and the tools and the experience, but unfortunately our society does not teach us emotional intelligence and how to deal with our emotions. So I suggest work with a professional, either with a therapist or with a coach, yeah. whatever your choice you need, is. You need a sounding board. You need somebody to be like, no, you're not crazy. And here's your permission to be fulfilled. Correct. This, 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 um, this narrative that gets perpetuated around doing this, you know, for the children or 
doing it to, in my case, it was to keep your covenants that, that you make, um, sacred covenants. And it's like your sacred covenant, your highest sacred covenant is to yourself and God, every, the God of your understanding. It's not to your spouse. It's not to your children. It's to you that sacred marriage within that is. So when we're talking about fulfilling, cause that could be a trigger. I'm just saying that could be a trigger word for people because they, for really orthodox um, people or who people who are more maybe fundamentalist around marriage, it's like fulfilling is selfish to be self fulfilled as a woman. That's you're on the grease slide to hell sister. And like, how can you eat? You know, what I, like that can be, I'm just saying that can be a trigger word for a lot of humans. And, and I see it come up so often. One of the programs that I offer is for women, mostly men don't have such a hard time deciding, but when women come to me, I have a program, which is the one cons considering divorce. And we do a lot of work on that. And what beliefs do you have that will stop you from here, from, from going through with this? And one of them is that this is too selfish. I need to put myself behind everybody else. And what I try to work with them is, making them understand that you do have an obligation towards your children's happiness. And I always say, if you can keep your children's happiness, safety, harmony within that situation that is making you very unhappy, A, you have a secret that we, the world needs to know, and B, kudos, stay in that if you want to. But what I found is that most people will stay in it sacrifice themselves and a lot of times it happens in ways like become alcoholics addicted to pills um they, again they live like a completely separate shameful life and then they're not fulfilling the, their duty towards their children to provide them with a happy environment they provide them with an environment where the mom or the dad has checked out they're still there they're still fulfilling their like you say you know their vows but are they really or are they just doing like a little bit of a of a pretending job and it's so hard to continue that i always say to my people like especially the ones that say i'll wait until my kids go to university and i said okay what are their ages and there's been times when it's like oh my kid is five <laughs> and I said, okay. so multiply 13 mm -hmm. years 365 days and tell me if the situation that you're living right now which most likely will only get worse you see yourself sustaining yourself and your child and your child or your children through that and most of the time we do have to have that come to jesus moment of i don't think i have this in me and again i don't think that is actually requested from us i think that as you were saying and i'm a woman of faith too and i had a lot of trouble with this is we're not necessarily asked to stay in an unhappy place because we sign a contract from what I believe was a previous version of ourselves. And I do believe that yeah. if we're doing- You literally life, are not the beautiful. same person. You're not. not and the when you, you were a baby, we, we were all unconscious when we got married because all we were seeing, we were blinded to parts of ourselves because we were in the honeymoon phase. And most of the time we got attracted to the person that we felt was gonna help us heal our wounds. And if we did a good job in our marriage, they help us feel, uh, heal our wounds and we help them evolve as well. Therefore, we're at a completely different level that we do not necessarily need to stay together anymore because we have done that work. And if we haven't done it, we've gone in the opposite direction and we have deepened our wounds. So one way or another, it almost the, the natural evolution is to say, OK, we completed this process. Now it's time to end it in a positive manner and continue with our evolution. Like I, I give the example that again, some people find it's a little bit callous, but for me it's like, we go through education, we go through school, then we go to college, then we may have a master's degree. We do not stay in any of those. As our evolution and as our learning progresses, we keep moving on in life. And I find that for many of us, our first marriage is not supposed to be the one where we're staying. It's the one that teaches us those lessons, teaches us about ourselves, kind of invites us to do the inner work. And when we do it, then we realize, okay, now I wanna stay in this marriage or I want to leave. And to me, both options are just beautiful. When you were saying at the beginning, like we got all the way through and then at the end we looked at each other and we said, we love each other. We want to stay together. That's a beautiful option. And there is the other option that you looked at each other and you said, we love each other so much. We need to let each other go and make right. sure that we each flourish. That to me is just as beautiful. Sometimes beautiful. the most courageous form of love you. Completely agree. Is goodbye. I completely agree. And 
it's so interesting because I, I talk to a lot of women who are literally in joyless, loveless marriages. And some of them are admitting it to me and some I'm just picking it up, but I know that feeling. I thought it was loveless, but it actually, there was a lot of love that we just couldn't express because we were so, um, we had some unhealed trauma that we hadn't addressed within ourselves and in the relationship for Jeff and I, now I just want to give people the hope piece and then we'll come back down to, um, this whole conscious, uh, way of, of splitting or separating or whatever. Cause I think, I think there are many women listening to this who probably need to separate at the very least. And so I want to speak to that. I really feel that strongly, but, um, Jeff and I now, I mean, it's been a couple of years, well, more than that. Yeah. I think it's been two years. I have to go back and my brain is woo, two years that we, came back together. And in those two years, we have stopped blaming each other. We have owned our own emotional states for the most part. We have learned healthy ways to communicate and we have worked really, really, really hard at letting the other person be who they are with boundaries and And what it's done is it's actually made us healthier and our children are seeing what it's like to proactively work hard and heal something. Um, And we're also real now, like we don't hide, we don't spiritually bypass or bypass over our, our emotions in order to be right or spiritual or safe. We safe in the sense of like vulnerable. We we're learning vulnerability at a level that I never, ever thought I could experience with anyone that said I could be, you know, take a different fork in the road, have a whole different, you know, outcome. What if I had done that? What if I had said, you know what? I don't see this, this, um, being the right option for either of us. And I love you so much that I'm going to let you go and be who you are with, you know, without ourselves as married people together. And I still reserve the right. I need to make this clear to my audience. I love my husband. I adore him. I cherish him. He cherishes me. There's so much love. There's so much history. There's so many years and kids and things we've walked through together. He's my best friend. He's my person, but I reserve the right at any time to continual evaluation and checking in that if there comes a point where we need to let each other go, I still reserve the right to do that. I am not locked in. And and, and a lot of people struggle with me saying that, right? I was like, well, aren't you committed? I'm 100% in but I don't have a crystal ball and I don't know what he's going to choose. He has his own agency, right? And I do too. So we, we try to keep our partnership as, um, as respectful and high vibration as we can. Like we're going, you know, to be traveling to Cancun to do a whole week of Joe, um, Dr. Joe Dispenza learning about meditation, like we're, we're up leveling together, but had he stayed, had he chosen not to up level, that was my deal deal breaker. If I'm in a partnership and they're not hungry for up leveling their life. Um, no, it, it can't. I, I, I'm not a match for somebody who wants to stay, um, stuck. And I absolutely love that that little clause that you added because I do the same. And I, for my first marriage, <clears throat> I remember telling my husband, I am not saying the vow of we are going to be together forever. I want to make it clear between you and I that I come from a very horrible, my parents' marriage and divorce and everything. So I didn't even want to get married. So for me, it was a very huge leap of faith. And I said, and we're going to be together for as long as we are a good force on each other's life and if that Mm. happens to be the day that we kick the bucket wonderful and if it happens to be before that 
wonderful but we're not putting that pressure on of this is forever and ever and ever and the same i, I remarried and i explained the same to my second husband i said we're going to be together for as long as we both want to walk this path together mm. and that's being said we're going to do all the work necessary we're going to try to put all the tools in our tool belt so when we find and this is not an if but a when we find the downs of the marriage mm -hmm journey will have ups and we'll have downs we will have tools and techniques to deal with them and in that if none of them work and we do the inner work and we decide yeah it's better we go separate ways we will go separate ways i think that it's important that we have the same amount of pride about staying in a marriage as mm -hmm. leaving, a mar leaving a marriage <clears throat> and that's something that my work is very focused on on trying to remove the stigma of divorce so the women that are listening to us the ones that this is resonating and saying, you know what yes i want to work with a coach and find ways to do conscious communication negotiation with my partner how to do emotional intelligence and see if that works that's fantastic, great path for you. And for the women that are saying, listen, ladies, I love what you're saying, but our marriage is completed. I want to get a divorce to feel just as empowered and not to feel ashamed, not right. to have this whole array of mistaken beliefs that we just pass from one generation to the next without analyzing and say, that's a beautiful option too. How can we help you? And make sure that both people are fully supported, which is the reason why I went into divorce coaching because I felt it's such a dark time. It is horrible. It's I don't think I've ever changing. felt such anxiety. I lost like, I call it the divorce diet. I don't recommend yeah. it by the way. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I yeah. lost like, I think I lost like 30 pounds in six weeks or something crazy like that. And um, it, it was like, I was emaciated on all levels. Just, I was starving. I needed, I needed something to grab onto. And, and you do, you go into self-doubt. Well, I'm so miserable. Maybe I did the wrong thing. Yeah. That's why you need guidance. You need guidance to help you stay focused and center. When emotions are high, intelligence is very low. And if we do not understand or are guided properly as to how our brain works, we're just gonna be dumping all these neurochemicals into our body that are just gonna feed that anxiety loop, that fear loop, and we won't be able to get out of it by ourselves. I always say it's like you get into a maze and you, you need that bird's eye view of somebody from the outside yeah, saying, totally. hey, this is the way out, navigate it this way. So you were married um, for 15 years, but you were able to be, take the high road really with your ex-husband and just, it was very amicable. It was very respectful, but he had to decide that too, right? It wasn't like, I mean, you can sit here and be like, yeah, I did all these things, but, but sometimes women don't have that kind of a, um, partner ex soon to be ex partner, if you will, who they just want to blame. They, you know, that maybe they're narcissistic. I don't know. There's a gamut of personalities out there, male and female. It's not, you know, gender specific necessarily, but let's just say that your, your partner is very resistant and very stuck and blaming and projecting and, and, uh, doesn't want to come to the table and wants to make power plays. My husband didn't do this, but I'm just saying, I see it all the time. So the woman, as I was listening to you, what I kept hearing is freedom. Women need the, and men too, but especially women, because in our society, we, we have become sometimes in marriages, a parent child dynamic where you have to ask your husband for things and can I have the money, whatever. That was never with Jeff and I. But I'm sensitive to the fact that there is power over dynamic in a lot of relationships and women feel trapped. So the trappings of, well, I would really like to approach my partner with perhaps a, let's just say a, a temporary trial separation, but he just can't, he, this was, uh, I mean, I need to back up a little bit. <laughs> so the time that Jeff and I almost got divorced was not the first time I filed. I actually had filed a year or two before that. And then he never would leave. And it wasn't that he was narcissistic or abusive or anything like that. He just could not conceive 
of, of us splitting and whatever. And so my heart softened and we worked it out and whatever, but then all the issues came roaring back. Right. And that's when I was like, you're going like a hard, a hard boundary, a hard, like leaving. But let's just say coming back to that, that one partner is very unwilling, let's say, which another, which is another marker that you're in an unhealthy marriage is that they, they don't really care about your happiness. They, they're, it's not first for them. It, it's not, it's not their goal in the relationship for you to stay fulfilled. And so they cannot conceive that, that a woman, their, their partner would, would make that decision. So what would you say to a woman who maybe she wants this to be amicable and she wants this, she wants to just, like you said, put her big girl pants on and just, you know, get, maybe she, maybe she goes to a therapist or a coach and, and they help her craft out this whole plan that she can present to her husband, but he won't have it. He just won't do it. It's, it's very common. And I always say it's very rare that you will find two people reaching the same destination at the same time of saying, yeah, you know what? They wake up one day, look at each other and say, yeah, let's, let's end this. And it tends to be that 70% of women initiate the divorce process. So that means that 70% of women have to find the courage to say, Hey, this is not working. Let's, let's stop. And what I found out through my own process, because it took me three years of, I don't know how to say this to him. I don't know until I started working with my own coach and then we together put together this strategy and that's what it took me a long time to realize that you do not do this just by chance you do not just say you look need I want to plan you need to plan it, you need to strategize it, you need to, I work with my clients a lot on how does your partner react to your uh, proposals, to your suggestions, to your questions and then we find out what I call their fighting style, which is like, okay, we're gonna present with information that is going to create cognitive dissonance in his brain. He's gonna be like, no, 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 no. How are we gonna break through that barrier? And there are plenty of techniques. Once again, if you know coaching and you know neuroscience, Mm -hmm. you know how to use this little subtle persuasion words and moments and even like the setting, like we talk about when are you gonna have the conversation? How is your energy going to be like, we practice, we literally, when we do the coaching, we practice how the conversation is going to do to go. And I often say as well, be prepared. It's not going to be like, we're going to have the conversation. I always say, you're going to have the conversations because this is a process and you're going to have to present the proposal. You're going to have to let them vent and just fume, then you're going to go back to it. Then you're going to go back to it. You're going to negotiate, renegotiate. And I come from a business background, so I know how to do power plays and I know how to negotiate, but I do understand the majority of women haven't been trained in any of this. They are in power dynamics where they feel that money may be an issue, social status may be an issue. So they already feel completely disempowered and completely in disadvantage in negotiations. So we work together to say, no, 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 no. Your worth and your courage is what's going to determine how the negotiation war goes. So again, it's, it's a process. This is the thing that we haven't been told and why divorce has gone so terribly wrong because we just go in there with our emotions, with our... I don't know how to do this, so we're just going to invent a way. Or we go and lawyer up, which you said at the beginning. And again, there's a, a time and a place for a lawyer. But I, well, we tried a mediator <laughs> first. No, no, no. She me, did not, me. bless her heart. She did not have the skills probably of somebody like you. It was, um, it, it was actually a circus to try right. to go to mediation. <laughs> And it happens often to me, it's before we talk divorce lawyers, mediators, the first call is to a coach, either a life coach or a divorce coach. And that's when you do this work to be like, am I going to be able to have the conversations, ask for what I want, communicate in a manner that Mm -hmm. he can hear? There, There are people who it doesn't matter how much we work together. They, there is something in the subconscious that really needs to be shifted. So that's not something that is going to happen because somebody tells you, oh, you just got to sit him down and tell him this is what's going on. We have to go into the subconscious and I do a lot of hypnosis and a lot of reprogramming 
so you can find the words. But to me, it's important that I'm not pro-marriage, I'm not pro-divorce, I'm pro-happy people. So whatever it's going to take to get you as an individual to be happy, we're going to work on that. Mm -hmm. The end result may be that, like often, I'll do the eight-week eight program to considering divorce, and then they decide, you know what, I'm going to apply these techniques that we learn, and then we may get back yeah. together or we may divorce. And I said, that's terrific. Whatever works, just make sure that you're fulfilled, you're happy, so we don't pass on to the next generations how abusive, toxic, unhealthy, or even just unfulfilling relationships is the model that they're going to replicate. And sometimes you literally, it's just a matter of outgrowing each other. You're just, you're just on two different. And I thought that's what happened with Jeff and I come to find out I was, the, we were neglecting um, the, the deeper conversations about what does it mean to have Jeff fulfilled? And what does it mean to have Sheree fulfilled? And that I'm not responsible for your happiness and you're not responsible for mine. I've been putting this on you and you've been putting this on me. And that was our game changer. That's ultimately what brought us back. Um, I want you, you have a 10 step process for healing because you have the Holistic Divorce Institute and you have a book, The Holistic Divorce, a practical 10 step process for healing. Can you just quickly run through those 10 for us really super fast? Yeah, which I say on the book, these are not in chrono chronological order. These are just steps that you're going to have to work on. But um, I'll tell you as they come on the book, the first one is acceptance. It's whatever situation we're going through, we're going to need to accept it. The more we resist even thinking about it, talking about it, that's just going to become a much bigger issue. Mm -hmm. The next one is to be able to feel our feelings. Very often we will just numb them. So that's how I stay for three years in a marriage that I was just drinking myself to sleep just so you know mm -hmm. we're staying in this so i i propose and again you may need guidance to do this because sometimes those emotions are so strong that you may feel like you're gonna get lost in the grief or in the anger so find a professional that will help you feel your feelings and then there is also the once you're feeling your feelings you have to create new habits that are going to be positive for your life because we're going to be going through so many ups and downs i call it the roller coaster of divorce that you need to make sure that you're going to have a safe grounded place to go to i also talk about practicing the three p's which is perseverance patience and practice we're going to have to do that all the time with every mm. new technique that we learn with every new conversation that we have it's probably going to have to be repeated and perfected i also talk about forgiveness like on repeat forgiveness and let go there's going to be so many areas of your life that are going to have to be let go i call it the divorce purge but we are just opening up the space for the new beautiful things to come into our lives. Forgiveness is also a process that we are not taught how to do it properly, no. especially when it comes to decades of things that we need to forgive. So I teach my clients a process that we do in Hawaii, which is called Ho'oponopono. I love that. that. I find it's, you know about it? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think it's magical to what get- What is it? I, I'm sorry. I love you. Please forgive, Please forgive me. me. Thank, you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So we do a ritual, they do a letter. It's, it's like a whole thing that really creates like an energetic closure and you're cutting the, the bind. So it's, it's beautiful. Um, we also, I, I go very hard on communication, conscious communication, because mm -hmm. I think that that's a skill that no matter who you're dealing with, we need it for every single relationship. Um, so I go in the book, how to do the basics of conscious communication, how to listen, how to speak with intention. Um, and I also teach negotiation. I do mm -hmm. teach a lot about how to, go, how to go into negotiation, setting your boundaries, setting the parameters, and then getting what you want. And I also talk about rewriting the contract because this mm. is what you're doing. The relationship very often will not end. If you have children, you're still going to have a relationship. It's sure. just not going to be called a marriage. So I say that this is an opportunity to rewrite that contract. And a lot of people will have to balance out those power play dynamics that we were talking at the beginning. So you can co-parent in sure. a good, positive manner. And the last step is to celebrate. I always want people to celebrate all along the journey. There's going to be little victories. There's going to be painful moments. There's going to be all these beautiful, empowering changes. And I want them to celebrate. So we work together as well in making sure that they are taking care of themselves and they're celebrating their progress.
So when you, I'm curious when you, I love these, by the way, um, when you were going through your divorces, did you have children? Was that a Yes, part? we have two kids. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how, cause it's been six years, you told me earlier now that you've been divorced. So, so what have you seen? Like, like paint us a picture of, you know, had, even though I'm sure that you have a great, it sounds like you have an amazing relationship with your ex. Um, ex is such a hard word with your yeah. children's father. Um, so what, what do you think, how do you think your children would have been different? And this is a heavy question. Oh, if no, but you I can stayed give... in the marriage versus now. That I can give you to... the answer. My children will not have a mother. They will have been orphaned because I would have been there. I would have mm. just been checked out. I was already doing that. And I was, mm. I was losing myself just to stay in the marriage. So I was, like I said, I, I, I got really deep into drinking. So I had to disappear and sort of put myself back together. And I see it now so often, like in these happy marriages, and I have my air quotes, where you just see one of the partners just basically killing themselves. But, you know, that keeps them submissive. That keeps them in that so to me i know that my children the mother that they have now it, it's just not it wouldn't have been there it would have been a very diluted non-existent version of me so paradoxical that the thought process you were probably having by staying in is i need to be in for my kids and that's why now i say one of my quotes is I want people to say I'm leaving for the children because that's how I felt. I felt that they would never know the mother that I am because I was spending all my energy staying in a marriage that had run their expiration date and I was only doing it so they wouldn't have to go through. And again, we, we put that go through divorce yeah. when now I call it to grow through divorce. Like my children have also learned a lot of resilience, a lot of adaptability. I say it's a really positive experience for children if they're guided again to understand mm -hmm. that life changes and it's okay. And now they have a beautiful, my husband, it's like, their body, they get along so well. So now they have extra people in their life that love them. I was like, what's better than having four loving adults that are taking care of the children instead of two. So for me, it's a win-win. And I know that they've had their moments and you know, there's been difficulty, but again, properly guided with a strategy, being supported. That to me is the big, the big shift that we need to ensure. Right. And I think as women, um, well, okay. So I have this course mend your marriage and in it, um, in saying mend your marriage, there's also huge disclaimers all over the place that sometimes marriages are irreparable. And that, like you said, the most loving thing that you can do, but some, you do have to go through a process of really becoming aware of how it's affecting your health and your partner's health, because Ultimately, and I said this at the beginning and I'll shout it from the rooftops, it's why I reserve the right to, to graduate from a marriage if I need to. It's because I value myself. I'm the common denominator in everything and every relationship I'm in. If, if I'm not feeling safe, if I'm not feeling seen and heard, if I'm not honored, which my husband shines at all that. Um, but I didn't shine at giving that to myself. So there's this fine line between what is this, the, what's your partner? You know, how are you guys unhealthy together? And then how am I like, even if I separate or divorce, I'm still bringing me with me. I am the common denominator. So I tell people, sometimes you have to divorce the old you. <laughs> And I will tell you this, like when Jeff and I were separated, I went to a retreat um, that was, that changed my life. I went to hundreds of probably retreats and ran them and everything. But this particular retreat was so incredible and soulful. It was in North Carolina and it was just a group of about 20 women and our facilitator was incredible, but it was all about your soul. The whole thing was called soul fire. She doesn't do these retreats anymore. Sorry, listeners, but it was, we were the last group that she did. And in that retreat, I married myself. I know that sounds, woo, but I literally made vows to my soul 
Mm -hmm. of what I will never think to be or feel like what I boundaries really, but also just love. And, and that was so incredibly empowering. Like I said, I had no plans to reconcile with Jeff at that point. I was, we were separated. We were in different households. I was seeing the fallout with my kids and it was just so heart wrenching, but I'm like, you know what? I have to come first here. It, you know, I've got to, I've got to find a way to really be married to myself because I don't know about you, Olga, but I was conditioned to have a man rescue me. And from the time I was a little girl, we've all, we've seen the Disney movies. We've sat in church in traditional settings. We've seen our own mothers bless their heart. We've been conditioned to believe that we're terrified to be alone. We don't know I'm again, I'm making a huge general blanket statement, but by and large, as a collective, women have not been empowered to be alone and independent and sovereign. Mm -hmm. So I had to, so that was just a turning point for me where I'm like, you know what, from now on, I'm married to me and God, whatever that looks like first. And everything else is in my periphery, everything, my kids, my husband, everything. Beautiful. I love that. That's that's my my motto as well. I think that uh, we do not need to sacrifice. We get to have it all. We get to protect ourselves, enrich ourselves, and that from the full overflowing cup we give to others. And yeah, the paradigm of how to be a, a woman is changing, and I'm actually all for it. I Me love too. that we have the, the financial independence as well. A lot of again these marriages that they stay together. Um, they only stay together because the financial uh, differential is huge and um, women don't understand how the divorce process and they also think that they're going to get totally screwed and it's another reason why find professional help that will help you understand that you're not going to be left living under a bridge that's that's not how the system works you're not going to so, be destitute of spirit or of material no but but we've gotten we've gotten it all wrong so my mission now and with this whole holistic divorce institute and the book in my coaching is to let people know there is another option it's just as beautiful. It's just as respectable. It's legal. And um, we, 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 I just want people to know you can walk that path too and you'll have support. That's beautiful. So people can find you online where, Olga? My Instagram is the place where I hang the most and that's at Divorce for Love. And then they can also check my website, www.olganadal.com. Um, and you can see there everything. Like how do I do my coaching? I also train coaches to specialize on holistic divorce coaching so if you feel like oh, i don't quite connect with you but there is all the other all these other coaches that have the same modality so one way or another you can find the help you don't have to do this alone and like you were saying before there is freedom there is beauty there is there's another chance if you really feel like i cannot stay in this or i don't want to stay in this now we live way longer than our parents marriage was supposed to last forever when our life expectancy was 40 or 50 now you gotta think you're gonna double that most likely i'd be and dead you, right now <laughs> right and then and then, yeah, then. Your marriage would have I'm just getting it. started yeah exactly and that, having that second chance at life like for me to be so madly in love again and and i mean now we're like two little lovebirds that you know we have our time with without our children so to me it's just like I would never go back and again my marriage was a perfectly fine one I just knew that there was more and I knew that the woman that I was in that marriage was quickly vanishing and I didn't want to do that so like you said before I also made a vow to myself I married my own soul and I said I came here to do something I didn't realize that I was going to be changing the paradigm of divorce <laughs> through my own experience but... I love what you're doing I think it's amazing um I I'm just in awe that there's even a holistic divorce institute and you're doing what you're doing so thank you um I just want to also end with just a shout out again to you listeners who feel trapped um, I'm going to make a little plea and then I would like you to, and we'll kind of, we'll end here. Uh, there's a saying that I love the universe leaves clues and you probably, if you are in an unhealthy marriage and again, most marriages are unhealthy, but if you are in a marriage that needs some separation, the universe has left clues for you. 
So I know that we hate the word victim. It's the worst word to tell, tell someone you're being a victim, but, but I'm just going to be bold with you and say, don't be a victim. Things will work out. Be a victor. You deserve it. And if you're, if you're meant, maybe it's, a, maybe your marriage is over, but maybe it just needs a huge reset button. And that's a massive gift that you give to yourself and your partner. So the universe has left clues for you. Start writing down what those are and don't be a victim, be a victor and honor them. Take the steps. That's my, that's how I want to live. Woo! <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I think that maybe one of those clues is you're listening to this and it's creating some yeah. emotion in you. And maybe it's giving you hope because we're giving you the two paradigms, somebody that didn't divorce and somebody that divorced. And we're both glowing. If you could see us, you'll see that we're both happy. So there is hope. You just got to follow your soul. Your soul yeah. is now speaking in whispers. It's going to get a little bit louder, a little bit louder. And we just don't want it to get this maddening voice in your head. So there is hope. And thank you so much, Sherry, for helping me spread this message. Thank you. Thanks for listening today, folks. Thanks for sticking with this topic. It's not easy. You know you're in an unhealthy marriage when one spouse is unwilling to up-level. That's actually my barometer. <laughs> I love how Olga talked about how she would be together with her spouse as long as they were both working on the path of progression, walking on that path, and I would agree with that. There's no sense being trapped in something that's painful in the name of suffering that is old thinking and it doesn't serve anyone in the family and your soul doesn't like it actually <laughs> so you can check her out again go to her website divorceforlove.com find her resources we're going to be doing a little bit of work together um, i have a mend your marriage course coming up that you can watch for on my website it should be launching here in the next week or two that's mend your marriage and yeah, we're just all about giving people choices and allowing for peace and freedom. So have a glorious week and we will talk to you next time on Women Seeking Wholeness.